Ladies, gentlemen, welcome to Rucky News. Show nine. Show, sort of, you know, anyway, whatever. Um, so, the big news, the England Four have been named. Although, on a serious note, what interests me is, one of the four who's been named has also been named by Angel, lovely girl, her parents will be very proud, um, because apparently he was with her all night. So there is something very, very strange going on. Although rumours abound that um, a member of the RFU has blamed it on New Zealand still being bitter about the World Cup. Wow. How fucking stupid is that? But then we are talking the RFU. That's a uh, local dentist just working away over on the extension. <laughs> My extension, I need one. Anyway, um, yeah, New Zealand, England tour. It, as we said last week, um, and if you haven't watched last week, you should watch it because it was a true story um, about Jason Leonard. I forgot to say, actually, because New Zealand is quite a place to tour. It was great because Leonard obviously told me to fag off. He was in at five o'clock. And uh, Gavin Hastings, who was captain, because it, it, says, it gets to you in New Zealand, basically, being there. It gets to you. And we were meant to be there on a rugby tour, obviously. And Big Gav stood up and said, Hey, he said, Hey, I just want to remind everyone, we're here for the British Lions tour. We're not here on holiday. And from the back of the room was, I am. <laughs> so am I. Uh, it sort of went on all over the place. It was terrible. It was the British Lions. It was like a scene out of Monty Python. Obviously, I was there on holiday, um, although not through choice, just because I was that shit. Um, but it, it was a bloody, it was an amazing place to be. I remember we even got to playing games called Chins, as you can imagine, I featured quite heavily in. It was a game that the Welsh boys uh, really enjoyed, Richard Webster in particular. To, to give you um, a flavour of Richard Webster, he had met me at the beginning of the tour, obviously. Amazing that, really, isn't it? And uh, he said... Uh, I know people call you bumface, he said, but I'm not going to call you that. I can't be bothered. I'm just going to call you ass. So he called me ass, all tour, but he basically we went out drinking after one of the games and, uh, and Webby said, let's play chins. Now, to explain that to all of you who haven't been, you just sit around in a circle and you hit each other on the jaw. Good game. Uh, and then you can change direction, uh, you can, you know, all that sort of stuff. Well, the best bit was, uh, Webby, obviously this tour had got to him, because the Irish winger, who I can't name, obviously, for legal reasons, Wallace, um, was sitting next to him. And uh, everything had come round. Webby hits me. And uh, I sort of changed direction. And I remember seeing Webby smile. I didn't know why. He turned round and he whacked Wallace. Basically, he chinned him, floored him, knocked him out. Sparko on the floor. Not really part of the game. So, being the sort of natural leader that I am, uh, I said, uh, fucking hell, Webby, uh, should we get a drink? Went to the bar and I said, Webster, bit harsh. He said, he's shit, Will. He's fucking shit and he's pissing me off and he had to have it. That's what New Zealand does to you, really. Teammate. But anyway, looking at this sort of like an end of term report, if we shall, um, New Zealand... Well, I suppose Graham Henry will not be in detention. So his wife says. She's quite pleased with his performance. Um, and I think, to be honest, she is allowing him an hour a night. A bit of a reward on his Nintendo or Wii or whatever. So uh, old Henners is, is probably pretty chuffed. Um, he has to do the washing up first. But um, Carter, back to his best, I think. Um, Conrad Smith, Nonu, they went well. Uh, and the back row I thought was excellent. Tight five as well, I think, uh, played far better than I thought, far better than England thought, if to be honest. Uh, notes of caution for me, you come up against South Africa, A, they'll put the centres uh, under far more pressure, and Carter, and I think they'll put the tight five under far more pressure, especially with their line-out. Uh, and that's the one area England actually did quite well in the line-out. So I think a few areas of, of, um, of concern for the, uh, for the Kiwis, but overall... They should be bloody pleased um, because they whacked England, to be honest. England, looking at the positives, I thought Kerr did very well. I thought Tate showed yet again that he is one of our creative backs with a bit of pace. 
Uh, Haskell and Reese did well. Uh, on the downside, I think that's probably the end of Charlie Hodgson, uh, Noon, and possibly none of the others. I thought the tight five were poor. We needed to dominate. The line out went well, but the scrummage time didn't. Um, and it's not good enough. Uh, so, a lot of interesting uh, discussions about what John is going to do. Kick ass would be uh, my big bet. I think, you know, the one thing, having spoken to him, because I'm a name dropper like that, obviously giving him advice, he picks my brains the whole time. Uh, talent is one thing, as John has said. We've got to find some guys with a bit of steel, or as Zinni says, a bit of shit in the blood. We used to have them uh, in 2003. We had them way back uh, when I was playing, obviously, uh, myself being the leading contender. I think, uh, to me, it was sort of summed up. You had the likes of uh, Richards, Teague, Winterbottom, Moore, Dooley, Leonard. And we were playing the French in the, in the quarterfinal of the World Cup. And the uh, whole build-up. The French were a great side still. I mean, they always are. But they had the Blancos, Sella, La Gisquez, Berbiziers, Rodriguez. They had a pretty good side. And uh, so big, intense build-up in Paris. Obviously, we wanted to expose Blanco. Um, and basically a lot of high balls on Blanco and very exciting forwards because they could kick the shit out of him. And they were very excited about this. Most of the team meetings, you know, Dooley was shaking and dribbling. And uh, so it gets to the game, run out, pretty good atmosphere. Two minutes into this game, uh, Nigel Hesler, by winger, sort of hits Blanco a little bit late and Blanco slaps him and then Champ floors him. So all hell lets loose. Referee, I think it was David Bishop, I think that was his name, um, calls the whole thing to a halt and obviously calls Blanco and me out. And uh, so referee's here, Blanco's there, chatting away and he's lecturing. He's giving us the usual thing and you're sort of going, yes, sir, you know, not paying any attention. And I'm looking up, well, I'm not paying any attention, I'm thinking sort of hair, shorts, all that sort of stuff. And um, I look at the French and they're shaking. I can, you know, they are absolutely in, uh, in bits. And so is Blanco. I'm sort of watching him, it's just like, fuck. So I go back to the forwards and get them around, because um, they used to hang on my every word. And I said, right, guys, I've got the usual lecture. Um, uh, we've got to have a discipline. And, and I was about 30 seconds into it. And Wade, as only Wade can, hey, chin, cut the fucking bollocks. Can we keep kicking the fuckers or not? Brilliant, that, isn't it? All that preparation. Can we keep kicking the fuckers or not? Um, we need a bit more of that in the England team the next 18 months. And I think if there's anyone who's going to find it, it'll be Jono. Anyway, till next week. Bye.